OneDrive, auditing, PowerPoint, and more, that's coming up. Hi, I'm Adam Saxon, and today's Thursday, which means we're gonna do our information roundup. Last week, I was out at Milwaukee for a user group meeting, answered a ton of questions, but this week I'm back, so let's dig in. First up is a blog post from Ken Poles where he looks at OneDrive for Business and how you can actually use that with Power BI, especially when dealing with refresh. I know a lot of people have struggled because typically you will sync your OneDrive for Business locally on your disk. And when you actually go to use that with Power BI Desktop or Power BI itself, it's going to reference the file that's local on your hard drive. That can make scheduling refresh a little bit challenging, especially when you wanna keep everything in the cloud. So he looks at how you can actually use the cloud source for this by way of the URL to the OneDrive source itself. So if this is something you struggle with, be sure to check out this blog post to see how you can do it. Next up is a blog post from Rezared where he looks at how you can use PowerPoint to help deliver a story inside of PowerPoint. This makes use of the Power BI Tiles app inside of PowerPoint and this allows you to embed Power BI tiles into your actual PowerPoint slides. This can really help with the storytelling that you're trying to convey inside of PowerPoint itself. And you can also add additional information around that tile to help support it. So if you're curious about how to go about doing this, be sure to check out this blog post. Next up is a service update with regards to security and auditing. On the security front, Power BI is now supported with Azure Active Directory conditional access. And what this allows you to do is to utilize features such as multi-factor authentication, as well as restrict where people can access the service from. So this could mean that you can say, I only want people to be able to access Power BI from my work IP range and not from home. Of note, this feature does require that each user has the Azure Active Directory premium license as part of their account. On the auditing front, auditing is now available inside of Power BI. It is off by default, so you have to go into the tenant settings under the admin portal to enable auditing. At that point, it takes about 24 to 48 hours before it'll start showing up in the Office 365 Security and Compliance Center. At that point, you will actually see items for key events that we are auditing inside of Power BI. To be able to see which user did which action, they have to have a Power BI Pro license. If they don't have a Pro license, you'll still see the events, but it won't show the individual user. It'll just show free user. So if you're a tenant admin, be sure to look at these features and see how you can make use of them in your organization. We had some updates on the mobile front. This included some manual refresh improvements the ability to use your favorite dashboards inside of the mobile apps, along with some other items that span from the iOS apps to Android to the Windows Phone apps. And if you haven't looked at it yet, be sure to check out the new mobile layout feature for your dashboards so that you can curate what the look will be when they go to use that dashboard in the mobile apps. Okay, there was a little love for developers out there. There is a new JavaScript API available. So if you're doing embedding, you're gonna to wanna to take a look at this. This API allows you to cross the iframe boundary. So that means you're gonna have tighter control over the items that you're embedding into your application. This blog post looks at two key areas. First is advanced filtering. The other is tighter control over your pages. And there are a lot of examples in here along with samples and links to documentation. I will be going through this feature in a little more detail in a later video. But if you're a developer and you're doing embedding of items into your site, be sure to check out this blog post. Okay, which item was your favorite? Go ahead and leave that in the poll up above or down in the comments below and let me know what you thought. As always, the links for these items are down in the description below. And I also have some bonus items down there as well. And if you like this video, be sure to subscribe for more great content. Every Thursday I do an information roundup just like this. And every Tuesday I do a technical item where I look at something a little more deeper. Thank you so much for watching and keep being awesome.